Costello. So, I have a really bad relationship with creativity. <laughs> um, yeah. Ever since my last video, I talked about holding myself a bit more accountable to being creative and uh, making more things in a creative way. I've done some of that. <laughs> I've been working hard on trying to do more stuff, but um, I found that it's really difficult. <laughs> uh, and of course it is. I mean, nothing worth doing is ever easy. Um, but here I am. I'm showing up for it. A few days ago, I woke up and felt really irritable and kind of low energy and low focus. And I found it really easy to feel overwhelmed. I have a bad habit of thinking about everything that I need to do all at once and all of that work piling on into a giant workload. It feels like too much. And so I run away from it. I avoid it. And I think it's time that I dove a little bit deeper as to why I have this bad relationship with creativity and what I can do to fix it. So I, with the help of my little journal here, <laughs> I took a deep dive into my creativity and thought, okay, let's think about the first reaction I have the moment I start thinking about doing something creative. So I'll share a little bit of that. What am I afraid of? Why is it so difficult to be productive? There are many things that I need to do. I perhaps feel it's best not to list them because if I list them, then I'm just gonna see all the things I need to do and I get overwhelmed. The other thing is persistence. Some creative things that I need to work on, being that they take more work and time, do not give me the instantaneous gratification that I've become accustomed to as a citizen of modern first world society. <laughs> Many things that I'm used to that give me instant gratification, like playing video games, watching TV, watching YouTube videos, thinking about, oh, how cool that is. Wonder if I could do something like that. And then the moment I sit down to think about doing it, it's like, wow, this sucks. This isn't easy. This takes effort. How can I make what I do fun? What if I take too long? What if it isn't good? What if me putting in all of the effort ends up failing and people see it and they judge me for my failure or I judge myself for something that I could have done better? What if I can't enjoy it for what it actually is? I also worry about time, whether or not I'm wasting it, whether or not I have enough of it, whether or not I'm using it wisely. Time feels very visceral to me. And I'm trying to figure out why does it feel so visceral? The most prevalent thought that I had in this whole situation was just the idea that standing still won't stop time. Just because I choose not to work does not mean that the opportunity or the urgency or the pressure really goes away. And the pressure's only there because I make it for myself. So how do I make myself feel more comfortable being creative? How can I be more creative and make it a more fun and positive experience for myself? There were three main roadblocks in my creativity that I identified. The first obstacle being the burden of choice. Back when I was in community college, there was someone who said a very important thing to me. He said, don't let the multitude of your options burden you from making a decision. And I've since spread that paraphrased quote uh, to many, many friends of mine, many people that I've had the luck to meet. And I think it's because many people can feel overwhelmed by a uh, multiplicity of options, especially in a very saturated world. There's so many things that vie for our attention and so many options that are presented to us, it's hard to make a decision. The second obstacle to my creativity that I ran into was the element of, well, I don't want to. If I'm aware of the things that I need to do or things that are maybe time sensitive or of the first priority in a list of priorities, I'll run into the feeling of, well, why should I do it right now? I can just do it a little bit later when I've had time to think about it and prepare myself. But really, it was more of a fear of not doing it well. I knew I had the pressure to do it. 
And I'm really good at doing things under pressure if it's the day of, writing essays the night before or the morning of. I've gotten really good at that. <laughs> I wouldn't think about succeeding anymore. I just think about having something. So I'm confident that I can just do something and not worry about it being good, which is really, it's a good thing, but not in that circumstance. I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. Also, inspiration being so fickle and so timely, I would feel the need to do something in the moment if I feel that inspiration. And as a result, if I didn't do it in the moment, I would feel discouraged from doing it later because I feel like I had lost the inspiration that I didn't take advantage of it then in that moment. And it's never really that urgent and that's never really the truth, but it feels that way. And that's a big part of that obstacle, the obstacle of urgency. And as a result, me not wanting to deal with it because it felt too pressing, too urgent. To do the third and final obstacle being that the work would never end that if i succeed the work will come and it will keep coming uh forever and that i will never have a break and that i'll never get to enjoy myself and that is also not true i'm telling myself this to the camera <laughs> but the work will always be there but only if you look at it as work so i came up with this it's taped up on my wall here this is called a creativity class schedule, or class in quotes. I thought, well, one of the most productive times in my life was when I was going to school. The creativity class schedule was an idea that I came up with a few days ago to help me really push past all of these problems. The first problem being, again, the burden of choice. If I say, I'm going to do this specific thing at this specific time, then choice doesn't really become a problem anymore. So I set up my sort of classes into different sections. For example, I have the YouTube section, the composition section, the album project section, which I'll talk about another time, and then two smaller sections, which are journaling and practicing. Each section that was big and required a lot more time and effort, like YouTube composition and album project being um, YT, C, and AP. <laughs> I even gave them a uh, class section acronyms to really make this a true class experience. I then broke them up into sections, research and lab. So each section would require research time where I would write things, I'd prepare things, I'd set things up and make time to prepare things. And then the lab being the actual doing of the thing, which leads me to remember this book that a friend of mine had recommended to me uh, called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Essentially, a lot of what the book talked about was this malevolent force called resistance, which is a characterized form of this energy or well, it's just resistance that would keep you from doing the work. Uh, and it manifested itself in many situations and in many forms. The one that I resonated with the most is with resistance involving itself in inspiration and involving itself in work and the idea of work. His suggestion to get past this was to, well, treat the time that you make for your creativity like a job wherein you punch in your time clock and whatever work you do, good or bad, you're doing work and then you punch out. The idea of setting aside specific times for specific things was really refreshing to me because part of it was, again, it's taking out choice as an issue, but also it's taking out prejudged quality as a consideration. I don't have to think about whether or not it's gonna be good. I don't have to think about whether or not I've prepared enough. So the second obstacle that this helps overcome, the I don't want to factor, doing this was a way to try to get over that, but not specifically, but I realized that it actually helped a lot more than I thought. Uh, just in the first day, uh, which was actually yesterday, I had uh, observations on how the class schedule was going for me. The first observation was that it feels a little exciting similar to starting school again after a long break. I felt like I was going back to school. I felt like I was gonna see new people and experience new things and learn new things. And that's a very exciting thing for me personally. I love learning and I love new experiences and meeting people uh, when it's in an environment that that's sort of 
kind of guaranteed. Not really. <laughs> I mean, there's many people who can go through school and not talk to anybody, but I made the conscious decision when I moved here to San Francisco that I would try to meet more people. A part of me wants to follow this schedule and really treat it seriously, but also a part of me wants to totally throw it in the garbage and say, I feel inspired to do this thing now, so I'm gonna do that instead. I had a moment driving in the car where I was thinking, I wanna work on the YouTube video today, and that was yesterday. And I had this full-on mental argument with myself. Uh, why don't I just do the YouTube video thing instead? I feel very excited, very inspired to do it. And I thought, well, no, I want to follow the schedule. I want to do the, the composition lab section. And then I realized, well, I took time out of my day setting up this class schedule specifically because I knew how much time things were probably going to take. I know that if I try to do the YouTube thing, I'm not going to have enough time based on what I know I have time for in that day because it takes longer to do the YouTube thing versus doing the composition thing or whatever. I set specific boundaries in my schedule to make sure that I do the things that I need to do that day that I don't really need to do, but it's time that I've allotted to do that thing. So why don't I just do that? And I got over that feeling of I need to do it now and I don't want to do the thing I have to do. And I did the thing that I had to do and it felt great. So case in point for obstacle two not being a problem anymore. I pushed myself to not follow my inspiration voice and instead follow my class schedule. And it actually felt really good to follow the schedule instead of just trying to rely on my inspiration. It turns out that inspiration is always there no matter what and that I didn't need to be afraid of it going away. I'm in control of what I want to do and me setting up my boundaries in time for that helped. The third obstacle, the work never ends, mainly treating the work as something fun to do. I'm focusing on how inspired I feel to do something. The fact that I felt excited as if it was the first day of class is really kind of pushing me again to have more fun with the creative process instead of it just being a nerve wracking, uh, vulnerable thing. It's just something that I'm doing because it seems fun to do and I don't have to be afraid of it anymore. It's just something fun to do. As of this recording, this is only day two of doing the class schedule approach to creativity. And so far it's working well for me and we'll just have to see if it continues and maybe I'll post an update on that. But for now, it feels good and I'm really excited about this direction. So anyways, that's just an update on how I'm doing creatively, what I'm trying to do to keep it going as it were. So far I'm feeling really good about this class schedule thing. Uh, I'm feeling really good about this YouTube thing too. I keep getting excited thinking about new ideas. Look ahead for an update video coming out soon. Just uh, talking about some projects that I'm working on, some things that might be coming up. Also the video talking about how uh, Mexico City went, um, all the things that happened there and what it was like traveling to perform a show in another country. Also maybe some other videos too. I got some really good suggestions from some friends, some really good feedback on how the first video went. Speaking of which, uh, I wanted to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who watched the first video and left comments or talked to me in person, congratulated me. I felt kind of weird that I was being congratulated, but um, I'm still letting it sink in that people are being really supportive of me uh, doing this thing, being supportive of me in a multitude of ways. And I just wanted to say I appreciate it so much. Uh, it's hard for me sometimes to reach out to people and say thank you. It's hard for me to interface with people most of the time just because of whatever's going on in my head. So um, I just wanted to take the moment now to say thank you to everybody. And thank you if you're watching this video too. Anyways, that's pretty much everything. Links are in the description to all my social media sites and my website as well. Yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, talk to you later.